Hello, this is the first tutorial about programming for STM32 microcontroller. In this video we will cover what you need to have in order to start programming for STM32, how to set up a project in Kyle Microvision, and also we'll take a look at possible errors you may encounter. In this series of tutorials I will use LC Technology Development Board. It is super cheap Chinese board that has STM32 F103 C8 T6 microcontroller on board. You can buy this board for 5 or 6 bucks on eBay including shipping. You can use another board of course, but if your board has different microcontroller, some things may not be exactly the same. As a programmer I will use a ST-Link V2 Mini. I bought mine on eBay for about 350. Though other types of programmers are very similar and it's easy to switch from one to another. The development environment I will use is Kyle Microvision, but in next videos you can use whatever is comfortable for you, since it will be more about the code than the environment. So let's start. At first go to Kyle website and download it. You will need to fill a bunch of crap to get it. I use version 4.74, but I suppose version 5 is not very different. Then install it, should be pretty straightforward. Now comes the tricky part. Unlike some other microcontrollers, you can't just start writing code and have fun. You have to configure the fucking thing. Let's go step by step. Step 1. Go to the project, new microvision project, set the directory and the file name. Choose microcontroller, in this tutorial we use stm 32 f 103 c 8 t 6 click OK, then it will ask you to include the startup file. You can click OK for now, but we will come back to it in a minute. Step 2. Categorize the files in groups. This step is optional, but it is nice to do so, because it's easy to get confused if you have one folder with 9000 different files in it. At first let's rename source group 1 to startup. Use F2 hotkey to rename. Then add groups user, cmcs and std perif. Step 3. We need to download some libraries, so the compiler can understand what microcontroller we try to program and how to do it correctly. Go to st.com, products, microcontrollers, click STM32, 32-bit ARM Cortex MCUs, choose the series, specify the series little more, and then find your exact microcontroller in the table below. Then go to design resources and search for standard peripheral library. You can use Ctrl plus F for that. Download it somewhere. Step 4. Now extract the archive you just downloaded, find folder libraries there and copy folders CMCs and STM32F10X systemdperif driver to your project directory. Also create folder user in your project directory. CMCs and STM32 F10 Access Deprived Driver folders contain code that implements very basic tasks like uh, defining register names, shortcuts to pin numbers, standards for interfaces, etc. You don't really need to know every detail about these files, just think of it as a core code. Step 5. Now we need to connect these files to our project. Note that we will only connect .c files in this step. Let's go through our project tree. Startup. We already have startup files, but in the case if you have some problems with file provided by default, you can change it to the file you have in startup folder deep down your CMC's directory. So in this case you need to know which exact startup file you need. User. Add new C file to your user folder. That's gonna be your code. Write the code skeleton also, so the compiler will not be upset. CMC's. Add two files here. First one is located in CM3 core support. Second file is located in CM3 device support ST SM32 F100X. STD perif. Here we will add files from STM32 F100X STD perif driver SRC folder. This folder has a lot of files that can be used when developing different kinds of programs. For example, if you need ADC, then it would be a good idea to use ADC file from this folder. Since we will begin with simple GPIO stuff like blinking LED, we will add only three files. misc.c, which performs miscellaneous functions, GPIO, which is responsible for GPIO, and RCC, that provides reset and clock control functions. Step 6. Go back to the archive that we downloaded before, find folder project, examples, and then choose any example from there and open it. Find file stm 32 f 100 xconfh Copy that file in your std perif driver folder. 
Step 7. Go to Flash, configure Flash tools, open C slash C++ tab, type in use std perif driver in defined field. Then go down to include paths and add all folders that you use in this project. Step 8. Ok, now you have your main.c file open. Write the first line of your code. Include stm32f100x.h. Navigate to this file in device support folder, then disable .h files read only attribute. Now back to microvision, right click on include file, open document, and now you see a big configuration file for this series of microcontrollers. Navigate to line 65. Here we need to specify what kind of device we are using by uncommenting it. We use medium density device, so uncomment it and then go lower to uncomment use std perif driver defined statement. This will allow us to program the chip later. Note that for some other STM microcontrollers we also need to specify clock speed below. But for 103 series it is already done in a nice way, so we have our 8 MHz setup. Don't forget to click save. Step 9 and the last one. Go back to flash, configure flash tools, then to debug tab. Choose ST-Link Debugger and check the radio button next to it. Click Settings, under Port drop-down menu select SW, in the Flash Download tab click Add and find STM32F100X Mad Density Flash. It has 128K of flash for some reason, but fuck it, choose it and click OK. Then, in the size change 4 digits from 2 to 1, since our microcontroller has 64K of flash memory. Then check Reset and Run checkbox. This will reset the microcontroller automatically after programming, without manual pressing on reset button. Click OK and now we're finally ready to do some shit. Let's discuss possible errors you might have. Click Build or F7 to compile the program, which is empty for now, but we just want to be sure that all libraries work OK. There are not many errors that can pop out on this stage, but ones I can think of are no such file or directory type of errors. In this case, be sure that all the files are copied and that you specified all folders under that C, C++ tab include pass field. And please choose target device in STM32103x.h. You probably miss that you need to disable read-only mode on files in device support and then edit.h file. If you have some other errors, read them carefully, they may be very simple to solve by yourself. If it's not, use Google or re-watch the video, maybe you missed something. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.